You're watching Travel Vidsa TV. My name is Dean, and this is another free smartphone editing tutorial. In fact, this is more of an update, a very exciting update about the Splice app. The Splice editing app has had a major upgrade, a makeover, and one of the best things about it, it's finally available on Android. I've been waiting for this update for a very long time. Splice has been my favorite smartphone editing app for quite a few years already. And the problem was always that I had to find an alternative for Android users and kind of like make up the difference. But now, finally, it is available on both iOS and Android devices. I am super excited to share this with you. There are a couple of niggles with it still. They're in the process of updating it and catching it up to where the iOS system is, but it also comes with some plus sides. Like for example, it is completely free at the moment. So take advantage of that, get in now, get in early, and you might see the bonus of having it free for longer than other people. What I mean by that is that I still get the iOS version for free because I've been a long time user. I have no affiliation with Bending Spoons, the app creator. I just purely make these videos because I think it's one of the best video editing software platforms for editing on a smartphone. And that is what we do at TravelVids. We teach people to make videos using their smartphone to capture your experiences on the go. When you're out there in the field, you need something to put that video together right on the spot quickly. And that's why splices just keep coming up again and again and again. So I'm gonna go over to my Android device in a second and just show you a couple of the things that are in need of improvement but also I want to look at one or two of the things that have definitely improved and taken splice from one of the best to the ultimate best in my opinion. Once again I'm not getting paid to say that. I am no way connected with them. I just really like this app. Let's open up splice over here. Okay, so the opening menu is very similar to how it was before. You've got your projects over there and a uh, start new project is, is fairly simple and straightforward. If we open that, okay, here is our very first problem. This is my camera media roll library and normally, as you know with me, I like to work from albums. I sort all my footage out into different scenes, into different albums so I can edit the different scenes individually that it doesn't become overcrowded in the timeline. The problem is I don't have that album option here yet. This is a big problem, but this is something that is obviously available on the iOS version, meaning it will come across here. It just hasn't been developed into the app yet. So this is a temporary problem. It's not a long-term problem. However, it is really, really very difficult to make a video uh, if you have to kind of go through your crazy camera roll here and find find the stuff. So when you do pick out the clips that you want and go for next, this is all very much the same as before. Make sure that you're naming your project correctly. This is the Sintra, uh, not Dintra. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're not gonna not gonna actually edit. Um, and you can select your aspect ratio and start the project and there and there it loads you up into the timeline mode. What's great is this is where some of the changes have been implemented that are really good. But let's go over to a project that I have actually worked on to show you what the timeline looks like and what changes have happened there. What I really really like about the new timeline layout is that the menu is simple. It's the three options. There were five options previously and you only really needed these three. Furthermore, you don't pinch zoom on the screen anymore to get the, to the zoom in and zoom out. You can't do that. You can, by touching it, you can only move it left and right. And if you do need to zoom in and out, it's just these two buttons which are right there in, in, in out and then you can see your whole edit. Uh, the problem with the smartphone editing has always been that it's so small and so finicky that you can make errors, mistakes, you can mess up your own edit accidentally, and this has cleaned that up substantially. So you can really go across, say, uh, you know, this clip, I want to edit that, and you can just zoom in on that clip now, 
and there it is. The next thing that is really great is that you know, the moment you touch on the clip, it gives you the menu at the bottom here, which is exactly what you need. Uh, but you can also double tap on the clip and it gives you a short menu. So that was one of the issues that I had was that the split tool is one of the most important things that you need. So you want to be able to split quickly. And that means I can now double tap and split super quick, can touch that and delete it. Uh, or let's do another example, double tap, split, double tap, delete. I mean, how much faster is that than having to go into tap, menu, delete, tap, menu, delete, or tap, menu, split, tap, menu, delete. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? There's no extra processes. So that is a huge time-saving thing. And I'm very happy about that. Uh, the new timeline that doesn't allow you to break things also made the reordering a little bit different. Meaning if you want to reorder your clips, you tap on them again, you can double tap and go to the reordering. And this is a separate area where you can just focus on the ordering of your clips. And you touch the clip and move the clip like this. So again, you're not dragging and dropping and making a mess of it. So yeah, those that's probably one of the biggest new features, which is great. The Let's look at a downside, <laughs> what's not so great yet. So sound editing uh, and dual layer editing. In other words, having one clip above the other, a two, two video timeline. Splice has never had this and it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. The, one of the, the good thing about it is that if you're gonna make a video on the go, you don't have time for that kind of finicky editing where you have to get into all the little details and cut this little piece and put that on there, like B-roll editing. You wanna create these short, meaningful stories that are just back to back, back to back, back to back. This is why we emphasize so much on about the talking to camera clips or, or the informal interview with other people rather than always doing the voiceover. It makes the video more engaging. It makes it more exciting to watch than you actually see somebody's reaction. You get their emotional sort of reaction to whatever it is that's happening in the video without having to cut away and explain so yes, the editing becomes a little bit simpler in the, in the final, but it's also simpler to and faster to create. So not having the, 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 the B-roll double layer editing, yes, it feels like a downside, but if you actually start to work with this and you plan your videos correctly around that, it becomes a major bonus. On the downside, however, I can't split the audio off of this clip. So even if I did want to do a voiceover section where basically where she's continuing to talk here, but I show something else over it, like I want to show this above that clip, like put it over here, I would normally just do this, would split it, I would remove the audio from this one underneath, and then you could delete that and the audio would sit here underneath this. So she would carry on talking, but you would hear that. I can't do that right now because I'm unable to detach the audio. The, again, this might be a feature that will be coming soon. I'm, I'm almost sure it will be. So for the time being, we just have to make do with full clips next to each other. Of course, you can still edit out the audio of sections. In other words, you can tap on that go to the front of the menu and deal with the volume over here. And if you want something to get louder or softer, you can always make a split in it, have this at that volume and then this at a different volume. So as it goes through, it kind of changes. So there are workarounds, but obviously it would be better if we could detach the audio so that you can do those voiceover sections a little bit more easy. Other than that, not much has changed pretty much splice as it was before, but definitely made easier to use. The exporting options are very straightforward. If you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> just basically open it. It'll pick out the resolution for you based on the media that you put in, hit save, and you're good to go. No payment required. That's great. Now, in summary of the pros and cons there, one of the plus sides is that there is less chance to make mistakes, there's less dragging and dropping and more fixed button pushing to move things around. The access to the split tool is way faster, the access to the delete tool is faster, and 
the menu layout is much more simple and easy to kind of deal with. On the downsides, it's that the update for accessing albums is not there yet and the detach audio is not there yet. It says in here specifically, we are working hard to bring you some of the features you've been asking for, so stay tuned. So far, they have delivered time and time again over the last five years. I do trust that these developers will take into account all the stuff that is missing, and I'm sure it'll be there before we know it. Until those updates are done, I'm not going to be updating the tutorials because they are still valid. The principles of editing have not changed and they will not change. If you follow the process that are in any of our tutorials, you'll begin to understand how editing on a smartphone works. And it almost shouldn't matter which app you're using technically. So learn those principles, learn those step-by-step -step processes, which you can take across to any app. Um, but the moment those uh, updates are done and they've updated the system, then I will definitely do a complete new series of the splice editing tutorial for both Android and iOS devices now. So if you are looking forward to that, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Let us know in the comments if there's anything that you would like to know about Splice and the new app that was not covered in this video. And we will keep our finger on this pulse because yeah, it, this is, this is going to be exciting for smartphone editing and the future. That's it from me for now. And I look forward to sharing my next video with you, which was a day out in Portugal here, a day out to Sintra using nothing but a smartphone, no extra accessories, no tripod, no clamps, no nothing. I took uh, just this phone out and I wanted to make a short experience video of my outing to Sintra and seeing the castles. So I'll be sharing that with you very soon. That's it for me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers for now. A lot of people have benefited from our splice editing tutorials, which are free on YouTube, but there's also a short course which you can sign up for on our website where you are able to engage with me if you have questions about specific problems.